idea that you suspect to be true is in fact not true. Right? But if you can prove that it is true in all cases, then that's a theorem. That's, uh, that's a proof. That's what a proof is all about. So uh, let's, let's uh, do some fairly simple examples of a, of a proof. Here's, here's one. Uh, the sum of any two consecutive numbers, and by number I just mean an integer, like one, two, three, well, let's say a um, natural number. So summing two consecutive ones, so say here's, here's a number, and then you add to it the, the next number, well, that'll be n plus one, right? Well, and you have to prove that that sum, the sum of two consecutive numbers is odd. Well, that's just 2n plus 1, right? Now, any number 2n, n is just an integer, that's obviously even, and you add 1 to it, well, that means the whole thing is odd, right? So n could have been anything, any, any integer, any, and you add the next one, so you get 2n plus 1, this is even, plus 1, so it's odd. So that, that we've done. Now, let's... Uh, Try something a little bit harder. Uh, take the product of any three consecutive integers, right? so of the form n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, and the speculation is that that product, you know, the, the result of multiplying these three consecutive integers together, uh, you can divide that by, by 6. Um, and if you're familiar with this little symbol here, the percentage sign, in this case it means modulus. Uh, modulus. What does that mean? It's the result, the, the remainder, what's left over after you do a division. So for example, 7 mod, or modulus mod, uh, 3 is 1. Why is that? Because 7 is uh, the same as 2 by 3 plus 1. Okay. Uh, 11 mod 8, what's that? Well, it's 3. Right? So that's the nature of mod. Now, here uh, you're modding by 6, and if the answer is 0, that means that this number, n times n plus 1 t times n plus 2, you can divide that by 6. Right? So um, a factor of this product is 6. That's, that's the suspicion. That's, that's your hypothesis. So let's, let's try to prove that. How do you prove that so that it's true in all cases? I'm going to have to find a better solution, I think, to rubbing out stuff. This, this is not too effective. Okay, so how do you, how do you prove that? Now, your, your suspicion is, your hypothesis is, your conjecture is that uh, the product of any three um, consecutive integers is divisible by six. So, how could you do that? Uh, well, so... Uh, here's one way, as, as a proof, an example of a proof. That product is obviously divisible by 2. Right? So that's true. Now, why is that? Well, this could be even, an even number. So if that's even, this is odd, right? and therefore this is even. Or alternatively, this first number here, that could be an odd number. So this means this is an even number, and that's an odd number. Okay. Well, if you multiply an even number by an odd number, this has to be even, right? That has to be an even number. In fact, any number that, that has a, an even factor in it is even. Okay. So either way, the product is even. And therefore, you can divide by 2. So, so this is true. Follow that logic? If not, uh, rewind, go back till, till it's obvious. Now, I'm, going to, I'm now going to prove that this is true. 
that this this divides through you can divide this product by three now if that's true if you have a, a factor of two and a factor of three in this product therefore this product is divisible by six right? so you get that all right so how how can we prove that this uh, divide um, you can you can divide this uh, by three well n n's an integer right so it can take the form of 3p plus naught or 3p plus 1 or 3p plus 2 in that form right yeah it's, it's that's the only three possibilities all right well let's let's take the first case so um, this one so, uh, so you're going to have something of the form 3p, so this one will be 3p plus 1, and this one will be 3p plus 2. Well look, here's, here's a factor 3, right? So this, when, it's, when this first one is of the form 3p, that means this product has a factor of 3. Alright, let's try this one. So it'll be 3p plus 1. So this one then will be one more. So it'll be 3p plus 2. And this will be one more again. So this will be 3p plus 3. Okay. Well, you've got a 3 here. You can take, you can take that 3 out. So make it just 1. And put a 3 out here. So this has, this has a factor of 3. Now, a similar logic with this one. I'll we'll just do it quickly. So let n be 3p three, three plus 2. So this one will be 1 greater than it, so 3p three p, three p plus 3. So this will be 3p plus 4. Okay. Now you've got 3 in common here, so that becomes 3p plus 2 into p plus 1. And take the 3 outside here and 3p plus 4. So this has a factor of 3. So we've done all three cases, right? We've covered every case, and a proof has to do that. You have to prove it for all cases. It has to be a general proof. It's not good enough that it's true for 99.9999% of cases, because if it's just one counterexample, if there's just one example where it's not true, then it's not a proof. You know, it's, just, it's just false. The, 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 uh, what's the word? The conjecture, the, the idea that you suspect might be true, if there's a, if there's just one, even one counterexample, it's not true, right? So, but we've just now shown that it's true in all th all three cases, all possible cases. So uh, the product of these three uh, has a factor of three. And before we showed that it has a factor of two. So if it has two factors of two and three, therefore that product can be divided by 6. Okay. Now that's an example of a proof, because it's, we've shown it to be true in all cases. Alright, uh, so done that, done that. Now, uh, if you look at uh, more advanced mathematics texts, especially in uh, an area called uh, finite simple group uh, and it's not simple in the sense of the easy to understand in fact it's just the opposite uh, in this context uh, a simple group has a very technical meaning and sometimes uh, the mathematical proofs in that topic can be many many pages long and so it comes a bit confusing for the reader, especially uh, approaching this, you know, the book for the first time, as to where the proof, you know, the, the logical mathematical statement, the proof, where does it end? So um, there are various conventions. Uh, it's getting to the stage, and it's still a little fluid. You know, it's not every author uses the same convention to indicate, like a little marker that tells the reader that this is the end of the proof. Now, an older one, an older convention, was to use the three letters, QED, which is Latin, and means quod erat demonstratum. 
Latin meaning uh, as was to be proved, what was to be proved. Now it's sort of fallen a bit out of fashion and nowadays uh, the tendency t tends to be like a, a little square or a little rectangle, hollow, sometimes solid. Now in, in this particular book the end of proof symbol or sign uh, tends, I don't, know if can, I don't know if you can see it, I'll come up really close where my finger is here. Uh,